Hey, what's going on guys? B Flatten here with a brand new video today. Today we're going to be talking about the challenge mode random lock. Now, random lock is going to be just exactly what the title says. Everything is randomized. You have Thames that are randomized, moves that are randomized, items that are randomized. There is still consistent strategies to help you through even if things are completely random. Uh, you do get some pretty decent rewards for them. Not my favorite, but um, some people may like the emote or the backpack, for example. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the strategies. Before I do, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, AYX Tem, who uh, passed over their uh, strategies and what they did. They are the person who is the only person at the time of recording this video to complete random lock. Uh, and I believe a second person just recently beat it, actually. So they're the first person to complete it. Um, but uh, a couple more people are actually starting to beat it now. But uh, let's see what AYX did to beat uh, random lock. So, of course, with every challenge run, you have to either pick one, solo or co-op. I probably recommend solo. Uh, random lock in co-op just seems really, really tough. So let's go ahead and give it a start. Immediately, right out of the gate, as soon as you get into the story, um, the first suggestion is heavily uh, re-rolling if none of your first two Thames have a decent low-cost move with uh, same type attack bonus, otherwise known as stab. So things like say like a crystal with uh crystal vest highly unlikely in random lock but um something along those lines uh the reason being is because if you have a high stamina move or not even an attacking move you're going to be either a a sitting duck or b you're going to overexert and just blow yourself up and that's also going to cost you the run so let's go ahead and see what my random lock tems are going to be You want to make sure that you uh, have a decent start. Um, while we go ahead and pick up our Thames, even if you get a mental Tem with like Gamma Burst or Beta Burst, for example, you'll barely be able to pull it off and you risk losing your entire run uh, due to a Tem like that might have Willpower Drain on you, which is a low um, stamina move and kind of just overexerts you. Um, so if you have something like Beta Burst, which is 27 stamina, Gamma Burst, which is like 36, uh, not going to be ideal. Um, or uh, excellent at all. The next one on the list as we progress through the story is getting hit with Rush, Dim Mac, or Depress is the worst part of the first two islands. However, this got recently changed, so you do not have to worry about Rush, Depress, or Dim Mac anymore. Just wanted to uh, make sure that that was uh, included as well because uh, those things are completely terrible to face because guaranteed damage moves like that are going to be um the worst so it looks like our first three thems here is a sanby a koish and a uh halsey me personally um i think sanby is probably the best bet but mental moves have a lot of uh high stamina cost so if I'm trying to go for something that's um, low stamina cost, but also a stab move, I'm probably actually going to be looking at Koish. Koish might actually be my best bet here, um, because uh, water moves have some pretty low stamina cost, and um, I believe that's also digital Koish. Or no, that's water Koish, sorry. Um, I think Koish is probably the best bet here. Um, so whatever three you end up getting, I would say and recommend looking up moves that have um, not only same type attack bonus moves, but ones that have the most um, lowest stamina cost possible. So for me, I'd be looking at Koish with Water Blade, uh, Sanby with like Telekinetic Shrapnel would be pretty good, uh, Halsey with like maybe Digital Stream, I don't know. Uh, not really a lot of low cost uh, stamina moves for uh, Digital, unfortunately. I think Koish is probably my best bet here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Koish. It says Smazy in the text. That's pretty funny. I did not know that. <laughs> Alright, we got a Koish. We'll name it Fish, as one does. Uh, it is a Wind Fish. Not really the greatest stats, but we're not too concerned about that. We're concerned about its moveset. So, in this instance... I have Transient Echo and Earthstream, two very high stamina costing moves. However, I can still pull off an Earthstream or a Transient Echo before uh, worrying about OX. Um, I would recommend resetting this because not only are these uh, bad moves for the Windfish, 
but also um, they are not stab at all. So no water, no wind. That's mental, that's earth. For the sake of the video, though, I will continue. Um, but uh, I would recommend resetting that. That is not a good fish. Let's go ahead and take a look at our um, 2Y after we beat Max here. Max starts off with a Dario. Normally it's an Ori. So hopefully we can end up beating this. Otherwise, uh, we might be screwed. Oh no, he has autonomy. That's actually not great. Um, in this case, I'm going to rest. Cold Breeze. He's almost overexerted already. I'm going to get free spammed. We'll let him cold breeze again. He overexerts. And then we just blow him up. Uh, I have no stab moves here, so maybe just a transient echo. Uh, we'll play our stream. Screw it. Now we transient echo. That actually kills me. <laughs> that actually kills me. And this is exactly what I mean by choose moves that are low stamina. This is what I mean by choosing moves that are low stamina, because that overexert is not great. At least we can kind of cheese this Dario. That won't kill me. So we'll transient echo here, blow up the Dario. We'll check 2Y. And then we can go ahead and continue uh, the rest of the guide. We'll see if 2Y does anything decent for me. And we get our bird. And it ends up becoming a Garong. We'll name it Dong. Oh, it contains valid words. Um, Dongy. <laughs> it has a seismic trait. Decent stats all around. Not really worried about those. Tem card, bombs. And we'll go ahead and check our Dongy. It has Clinch and Generify. Um, no stab moves. Uh, and the stamina is pretty bad. I would recommend a full reset here if uh, if this was me. Because um, there's no stab moves and the stamina cost on both these Tems are not really that great. Uh, I will not be able to progress, unfortunately, into the uh, random patch of grasses. But um, we'll go ahead and just continue the uh, guide for the sake of the guide. Um, if you find a patch of grass with Thames that give HP TV, so like Psy Pats, for example, excellent, excellent, excellent. Because um, making sure that your Thames have as much HP TVs as possible will make it so that they can go longer distances um, for uh, their health states. Um, it's very, very vital and important for the random lock because um, more HP, the better. Uh, you don't know what you're going to be facing against. If you're going to be facing against something with a random uh, two times effective move against you. Because we don't have any idea what's going to be in front of us. So HP is just going to be the safest bet possible. Um, stickers do not exist and instead are a large pool of random items. So if you've ever played the uh, game regularly, stickers are on the ground. Just scattered everywhere as little sparkling uh, uh, patches of uh, grass or in the sand, whatever. Those are random items instead um, as part of the random lock, so go ahead and check all of those. Um, they have uh, growth enhancers and learning aids so that you can gain XP or just gain one level for sure. Um, make sure to uh, check every single one. I believe they're still in the same location as uh, all the other stickers, so uh, I believe there's a sticker um, map to go ahead and check. Um, that is unconfirmed. Uh, boxes are also random loot. You can get technique courses and dupes of technique courses. Technique courses are one-time use in this game mode, um, unlike normal technique courses. They are um, um, seen as uh, ETCs. So it's very important to give it to a Tem who can make use of it with your best possible stats. So um, say, for example, I got a stab move on my Windfish. Throw a TC on there because it actually has some decent stats. The 37 attack is actually not that bad for uh, fish here. Uh, Durong also has 37 attack here, so that's also not too bad. Um, putting a um, technique course that's melee would be pretty excellent for uh, Dong over here. Um, this one was also fixed recently in the patch that came out today as of the recording of this video. 
uh, side quests should give you the proper reward. Um, they made it so that um, the side quests give proper rewards now, so including like Thames that are gifted to you. So you can uh, make do with what those are. Um, in uh, in terms of AYX, he said that he got a TC when he should not have. He did a uh, major slash when I should have, but uh, would need more confirmation on it. However, this was fixed in the recent patch note, so it should be fixed now. Um, neutral Tem is king. Shocker. The odds of you finding a mental Tem with beta gamma burst is just so high to roll, uh, especially with the two times weakness or four times weakness you'd be facing. So it's very, very, very rare for you to run into that kind of instance. It's way less than someone playing like Saipad who has four weaknesses. Tataru is just one of the best in the game because its base stats are the highest in the entire game. So if you find a Tataru, you're golden. Um, you can even play average SVs with it. Like, for example, these are pretty decent. And now on a Tataru, this would be amazing. Um, anything above average, you're already golden to go. Um, Tataru still has the highest base stats in the entire game, so you're already rolling with it. It's safe. Um, it's not. It's only weak to uh, mental, so you can play it very, very safely into a lot of things. Um, getting greedy can cost you run, so make sure not to be greedy. Uh, if you're able to play dodge moves, healing items, um, healing moves, for example, utilize those as best as your uh, ability. In late game, it's very important to leave little cup teams, so uh, LC, so Halsey's, um, Smazies, uh, things like that. Um, you want to make sure that you leave those on the field because their base stats are just absolute dog water. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you utilize this to your advantage as much as possible because now you can double a slot and you can leave a little cup uh, tem on there. So either they're going to overexert themselves with a high costing move because they have low stamina or it's just going to be sitting there not really doing anything or hitting you as hard. Um, always capture and store any tems you can during your routes, even early game ones. Once you unlock the Coward's Cloak in Deniz, you can equip it to a third Tem in the background, allowing you to level up three Tems. Their moves unlock at their normal level rate as story mode does, except RNG, so it's best to level up a Tem until about 60 and see their move pool. If it's still terrible, put it back in the box and reroll with another Tem. Unless amazing stats are having one stam move, low stamina cost, that sort of thing. Previous unwinnable or very hard to win battles are now nerfed and forced to win, like the max battle there. Um, normally Max has a level 5 Tem and he one-shots you, so things like that have been adjusted. Uh, General X in Kisawa has 4 Tems, Arbory has 6, and Rex has 6 as well, so make sure to uh, write that down and have that going for you. Uh, they have smart AI swaps, and they behave very randomly due to the nature of the game mode, random lock. Uh, it's best to not overcommit to a move and make sure your heals are topped off at all times as a priority. There's a level cap on free tam, gaining XP of plus 20. To bypass this, the best XP farm will be using learning aids and fighting every single trainer battle. Um, you can do this as the cap does not apply to them, no matter how overleveled you are. By Arbory, you need your main duo to be level 90 minimum, as the trainers in this part of the game have level 100 tems from time to time. If it's non-LC tem, it can kill the run and it um, hard counters you. For example, AYX says that he almost lost to a level 100 uh, size munch, spamming helicopter kick. Finally, there's not really any tips, uh, tips and tricks for Rex at the end. Unfortunately, it's just an RNG fight. Um, it's same strategy in prioritizing the non-Little Cup uh, Thames, but the most important thing to keep in mind is that things that have status moves or dodges prioritize those first because dodging Thames like Bright Beam, uh, Intimidation, uh, Stone Trench, for example, they can delay the run because it is a turn limit uh, battle. So you have to make sure that you beat the run in under a specific amount of turns. Tem that have dodge, you ought to make sure that you have to um, prioritize those first because it can completely kill your run. Um, it'll stall and just completely ruin you. Uh, these are all uh, confirmed by AYX, who um, is the first person to complete the random lock mode. So everything here is just going to be provided information from someone who has beat the um, challenge run before. So um, a lot of this is very valuable information. Um, another recommendation that I would personally recommend is checking out trainers um, along the routes as well, because I believe their levels stick to the same. 
I'm going to go ahead and just confirm that now. I don't really care about this run. I'm just going to go ahead and confirm it now to see if the trainers actually have the same uh, levels approximately, no matter what the Thames are. So let's go find one trainer. Someone has a Platymus, lucky. Let's go see if they're... Um, whatever Thames they have are the exact same level. Just want to confirm this for you guys. Zazer and Swally. We have Fish and Dong. And they are level 3 and level 2. So when I did the Nuzlocke mode, these ones were also level 3 and level 2. It was a Paharo and um, I don't remember what this one was. But uh, it looks like the levels are actually the same. So uh, you can actually use that to your advantage. I believe that is everything that I have for you guys, though, in the random lock mode. Um, I want to do a speed run, and I also want to do a Nuzlocke guide as well, because I've been looking at some strategies as well. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to release those soon. And uh, good luck in your challenge runs, and uh, especially a random lock mode, so we can have more people have the uh, emotes and the rewards. Guys, my name is Beefland, and I'm signing on out of here. Take care, all. Laters.